Hey folks, this is Vent with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly review Mystic Veil. Vale. This is the digital adaptation of the popular board game, a board game that I admittedly do not own, and with good reason. Um, the way the game plays would seem to be, at least to me, a little cumbersome in terms of slotting cards and that may not make much sense to you right now, but it will once I explain how the game is played. So before we get started, it's worth mentioning that this stat on a budget is live. Well, hi, you can see me waving there. Um, I'm just feeling lazy, and I don't feel like recording content and then dubbing something over it. So we're going to do a live playthrough today up to a certain point. I'll explain how the game is played and just tell you what I think about it. So here's a look at the main menu settings. Um, you've got audio settings here. If I'm going to go too quickly, I apologize, but just freeze frame it as always, and that way you can see things in better detail. Graphic settings here. Uh, we've got social media support credits. Okay. So, um, the original game, at least the core game on Steam, is roughly $15. It is 50% off until the end of the Steam summer sale, which I think is like July 7th or something like that. Don't quote me on that date, but it's somewhere around there. Uh, the expansions for this are also on sale. Um, there are, I want to say, four or five expansions that are available on Steam. However, it is not the full Mystic Veil vale experience. The tabletop game, I want to say, has 12 to 15 expansions, whereas the digital version only has like four or five. Uh, for example, there were a couple in the board game that were released in 2020. I think it was like Evergreen and Nemesis. Those are the names of the expansions. Um, you don't even see these here. So to see what is available, if I click on my collection... There is Mystic Veil, vale, the core game, Veil vale of Magic, Veil vale of the Wild, and Mana Storm. So these are the DLCs that I own. I'm not sure if there's more than that or not, but that's what I own right now. Um, of course, check out the Steam Store page if you want to see your buying options. So how does the game play? Well, this is a deck builder like Dominion, except, well, it, it's different in the sense that rather than... Rather than buy new cards from the array to add to your discard pile and make your deck fatter, rather you're buying parts to the cards that you already own. See, your core deck contains maybe five partially filled up cards and, say, ten completely empty cards that you can then slot in the future. So, throughout the game, you're going to be buying sections of a card, and each card that you have can house a total of three slots, a top half, a middle half, and a bottom half. Let's jump into it and show you how that works. There's online multiplayer, but I don't think there's any games right now. Um, this being released in 2019, oh, there's one game playing from the moment, uh, but you can create your own from there. We're going to go to Classic, and we'll set up the game. I'll just do 1v1 against the AI. You can see it supports up to four players. VP pool size, so if you want like a short game, moderate game, or long game, you can adjust it there. These are the different expansions that you can include. You can even customize things further. Enable leaders, enable amulets, and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit start. And we should be getting a deck of cards very shortly. Uh, select an amulet. This is part of one of the expansions. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just choose that one there. Um, amulets can be flipped throughout the game depending on certain circumstances, primarily when you say bust. Um, there are ways, this is also a push your luck game, and I'll get to how that all works in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and hit confirm, and select a leader, let's see, while in the field gain one mana for buying stuff or one purple wild symbol, um, and I'll explain what those mean in a minute. Um, Yokai the Poisoned has a negative red symbol here, which is bad. I'll explain why in a minute. Uh, gain one. Yeah, you know, let's go with the safer option there. You can also see an upgraded side of each card to confirm. Okay, so what you're looking at here, on the very top of the screen are Veil cards. You're going to be buying these with symbols that are going to be in your row, and I'll get to that in a minute. So if there is a green symbol and a brown symbol in my row, 
I can buy this card on my turn. Same with this one over here. If I have three green symbols and a yellow symbol, I can buy this Veil card. All right, and they, they don't get added to my deck. They're just sort of added off to the side. Some of them have abilities that can be observed, that kind of thing. Um, if they have any inherent victory points for endgame, on the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see a little gray number there, like a little gray box with a number on it, okay? So um, the middle row are the cards that you can buy with the mana that you've earned on your turn. And if you take a look at a card, you'll see in the upper left-hand corner, that tells you what slot it fits into on one of your cards. Again, there's a top half, a middle half, and a bottom half, or a third, I guess I should say. A half would be top half, bottom half. In this case, it's a top third, mid, middle third, and a bottom third. Mathematically, that's better to say. So again, this fertile soil, um, if I add it to a card, it would fill the middle slot of one of my cards and so on. And the number in the upper right-hand corner is how expensive the card actually is. Now, as far as how a turn plays out, you're going to continue drawing cards until you have a total of three red symbols showing. Whenever you draw a card, you add it to the top of your deck here, um, or at least... You add it to the top of your deck, and then if you haven't gotten to three yet, you move it off to the right. So that's why there's two cards here and then one card on top of my draw deck. I've gotten three of these red symbols. Now, here's the thing. I can push my luck and keep going. If I do that and get another red symbol, then I lose my turn, okay? However, that's where this, this little token comes into play as part of that one expansion. I can make use of it as I need to, that amulet. Rather, I'm just going to hit the uh, the button to move on to the next phase. I've got two mana, uh, so there's one, and there's two. So I'm going to go ahead and just choose, say, uh, this fertile soil there, and I will drag it to this bottom third there, and that ends my turn. Very simple. And we're going to keep doing this over and over and over again. I'm preparing my next turn. As you can see, a lot of my cards are blank. As I said, you start the game with some filled-in cards, but a lot of them are blank for you to fill in on your own. Now, I've got three mana this turn. I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, this button to buy something. Uh, you have uh, usable advancements in your field. Oh, what do I have? Maybe this one. While in the field, gain one. Oh, okay, let's go ahead and uh, activate that. I kind of want to activate advancement. All right, activate, there we go. I will gain the... Now, that purple wild means any symbol up here, but I don't have any other symbol to pair that wild with, so I'll, I'll take the mana. So, um, if you look above your row, you can see what you currently have. I've got four mana and zero symbols across the board. As far as the white and the blue rectangles, or the, the squares that you see, or the cubes, blue are victory points that you can earn throughout the game. Um, through card effects. Uh, let's see if there's any out here. Um, here's one. Dawnfire Dragon. Um, whenever you draw this card, you get two blue victory points, but it has a red symbol on it, which means, you know, you'll bust sooner whenever you're drawing your cards for your row, okay? Um, and the gray victory points, again, bottom right-hand corner, you'll see that you'll be collecting those. At the end of the game, you count those up, however many you have is winning, uh, you know, whoever has the most victory points wins. You'll see that there's some, like, knight helmets on some of these cards, and these are effects that sometimes stack with others. I'm going to see if I can find one. Uh, some cards have bonuses, others don't, like here. Uh, pack Leader has one brown symbol for each knight head, or whatever that is, on this card. So, if I add this to a card... And then I add something else, like this card, which has also a knight symbol on it. That would then stack with this ability here, and it would make it more powerful. So those knight heads or helmets or whatever are ways to make some of your cards more powerful. But again, you have to slot these cards onto the same... Or three of these same... or two, You have to slot these, I guess, sections onto the same card. I guess I should just call them sections. So, yeah, um, again, this is more of a review and not an actual playthrough. Um, I have several playthroughs out on my YouTube channel. But I gotta say, um, the biggest draw for me here is that compared to the board game, this one is much easier to play. Um, I'll go ahead and take the Wayfinder there. 
and move on. It's much more easier to play than the board game. In the board game, you know, you have to physically slide these sections and put these cards together. Then when you're done, you take them out. Setup and cleanup are much more cumbersome in the tabletop version. In this game, the computer does all the work for you. So that is super, super, uh, you know, convenient, I guess. Um, this one has a red on it, and it gives me two mana, however, and when bought, I can... It gives me negative two blue victory points and a red... Yeah, that's that's just nasty. I'm gonna go ahead and buy one of these. I try to stay away from those if at all possible. Um, I'll go ahead and put that fertile soil there. So yeah, um, it's a really cool deck building game that I'm terrible at. Um, I never push my luck, and I probably should. Um, I might get more mana per turn in doing so, but I hate taking the risk of busting. Again, if you push your luck, this card moves on to your row and, and becomes usable. But the next card that you draw, if there's a red uh, tree on it or whatever, or corrupted land, um, that will end your turn. You don't get to do anything except maybe flip this amulet if you have it as per the expansion. So I never push my luck. But hey, there are people out there that love that kind of thing. Um, if not the first card in your field, leave it in play. Eh. Um, Wood Sprite. Yeah, let's go ahead and take that one. I'll add it to that one there. And as you can see, my cards are becoming more powerful because I'm adding more sections to them. It's a really cool idea. I will say, like, I... Even though I'm terrible at this game and the computer beats me, you know, one out of two times, it's still a joy to play. Um, I love the idea of... Like, I love deck builders in general, right? But the whole idea of crafting cards... And then combining the abilities of from the different sections onto one card. That is a really cool idea that I've never seen done before, you know, when this was first released. So, like, I'm, you know, really happy on this. Now I'm tempted to buy this Dawnfire Dragon. Uh, Dawn is worth one victory point for each level three advancement you have. You can see that the advancement is in the upper right-hand corner represented by three dots. So, this will give me two victory points. You know, I'm, I can't pass this up. I kind of have to take it. This one is safer. It has one victory point every time you draw it. But uh, I kind of want this one. So, I'm going to put this on this empty card and hope that I can get another card that nullifies that red. Yes, there are cards out there that nullify that red symbol. So, I'm going to hope that I can get that in the future. And I am done. So um, what you didn't see here was, again, as you gain these symbols, like here's a, I have a yellow uh, symbol and a brown symbol. If that were enough, I could buy a card from up here. And again, those get me victory points and um, other, other abilities to use throughout the game. This is very early turn six. Not a whole lot is going on here. You're still building up your, your set. But I will say, um, my only complaint really with this game is the lack of the expansions. It's, it's, I've seen, I've, I've looked it up on the forums and the developer noted on there that they have no intentions at this time of adding more expansions to the game. And that's sad. There's so much, you know, that's, there's so much more that could be done with this game that developers choose not to do with it. So I'm just sad that, you know, with a, a game like this, they're not, deciding to do more with it it's just it's unfortunate um do i want this one or do i want this one this gets me a victory point and a mana has that little helmet symbol on it do i have any cards that need that helmet symbol and it doesn't look like it so i'm gonna go ahead and take the plow and just put that uh there for right now and there we go all right, so um, Mystic Veil, do I recommend this digital adaptation? Absolutely, positively, yes, especially now that it is on sale, 50% off until the end of the Steam Summer Sale. Again, it's like July 7th. So for a roughly $7.50, $8, something like that, um, you can buy the core game, and I think each expansion is anywhere from 2 to $5. Highly recommend checking this out. If you guys haven't already, subscribe to me on Twitch and YouTube. That way you can stay up to date with any new content I happen to publish. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.